So how do you succeed in one of the East Bay's most competitive markets that employs the strategy of bidding wars? Well, that's what we're gonna cover in this video and we're gonna start right now. Hey, how's it going? My name is Hans Dracina, and if you're here on this channel, you want to learn how to succeed and win in the East Bay real estate market. And that's exactly what we cover with tips, tricks, ideas, trends, anything that I'm seeing on the ground to help you be more successful. When you get some value out of this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, because I'm gonna continue to put out weekly content just like this, and you are not gonna wanna miss it. So today, we're talking about bidding wars. Uh, specifically, how to win, what's going on. It feels like a bit of a black box for most people so I want to shed some light on that process what actually happens I'm actually going to take you through uh, the process of a recent negotiation that I did on behalf of a seller uh, here in Alameda when we got uh, into contract or we got a bunch of offers uh, I'm going to show you what I presented to the seller um, how we thought about it what ended up happening to give you a sense of where we went so get ready to take some notes I'm going to show you my screen I'm going to give you some takeaways I'm going to give you some tips on how to uh, Think about this process a little bit deeper and how to hopefully be more successful in the end. So first of all, let me set the scene. Number one, we had a really wonderful starter home. It was priced uh, attractively as in teaser price at $9.95 in Alameda's East End. So that's number one. Secondly, uh, we ended up having a really good amount of showings, a ton of energy at the open house, so we knew we would have a fair amount of energy going into offer day. We didn't know exactly where it would land, um, but we ended up with nine offers. Two of them were pretty much throwaways, uh, so there were really kind of seven players in the, in the bidding process in this particular negotiation. So what we ended up doing uh, is is taking those nine offers and putting them on a spreadsheet that we then sent to the sellers along with the Dropbox link of all the actual documents in tow. Um, but what the sellers really saw was this breakdown of the spreadsheet. So I wanna show you that first, explain to you what happened and then give you some takeaways uh, of how you can be more effective in a negotiation going forward. So I'm gonna share my screen here in just a second. So let's take a look. All right, so what we're looking at here is an example of an actual spreadsheet that I used on a recent negotiation to go through the offers and break everything down uh, for my sellers. This is what I showed them physically as well as sending them all the actual written documentation uh, in a Dropbox link. So this is pretty similar to what most sellers are gonna be looking at, whether it's in writing or there's a spreadsheet just like this, or you're gonna have some kind of a net sheet, meaning like, you know, take the price, minus all the closing costs, commissions, loan payoffs, what's your net? So some agents go that far as well. Um, we generally don't because of course, all of this stuff can change throughout a negotiation and it uh, might change the outcome. So uh, looking at this, we obviously had nine offers in this particular case. And what I wanted to tell you is kind of where the seller's head was at, my advice to them, and then kind of where we went and what actually happened. <clears throat> so obviously you've got a variety of offer prices. You've got a couple of offers here that were down this one below the offer per, or the asking price, this one just above. Um, these guys didn't even pick up my phone calls when I called them, so I uh, left them voicemails and away we went. So we were really left with these seven who were kind of communicating, who were listening, who were engaged uh, in the process. So the sellers, just to lay the a further bit of context on you, were open to this number. They liked this offer, they liked it, it was solid 20% down, no contingencies, uh, a really solid price, over a thousand a foot, or just at a thousand a foot roughly. Frankly, they talked about just taking that offer. And because I had been talking, especially to these two agents through the entire marketing process, these guys had made their intention known that they really wanted the house too. I said, that's great that you like that offer. It's not a bad offer at all. It's a really solid outcome for your home. Um, but I think we can do a little bit better. I think we should at least give some of these guys the opportunity. However, we don't want to take a backslide. We don't want to spook these guys uh, because our next backslide is pretty substantial and we lose a lot of leverage from a negotiation standpoint. So what we came up with was that we were basically gonna work from nine all the way up to one making phone calls and basically telling people roughly where we were at. And um, if they had any room, now was the time to bring it. And so we started calling, we started calling, we started calling uh, until we got up to these guys because I wanted to see especially what they would do. Once these guys came up uh, in their price, 
uh, we got these guys involved. And the reason we did it in that order and the sellers wanted to proceed is because again, they did, they, if no one was gonna challenge our front runner, they were just gonna take the front runner, but they wanted to see if anyone else would prevail. And ultimately what happened was both of these offers, number two and number three, surged 75 and $100,000 respectively. These guys ended up matching it, um, but this offer, the second place offer took on some of the city transfer tax or took it on 100% rather, so it really bumped the net up to the seller pretty substantially uh, and it ended up um, going into their favor and they're the ones who are in contract on this. So um, what I tell you this is <clears throat> uh, simply to give you some context of what's going on when you're looking at this, what the seller is probably hearing, what they're seeing, what they're feeling, and then a strategy, uh, obviously every strategy is a little different based on what you have in front of you but nonetheless, what uh, strategy might be employed and then things you need to know once you get that phone call. Uh, so let's go talk about some takeaways. So what you saw there is actually what I showed the sellers uh, and then I walked you through the process of how we decided to think about it from a negotiation standpoint, who we talked to first and why um, and all of that good stuff. So a couple of big takeaways that I think you need to pay attention to when you're bidding. Number one, remember that the seller is uh, always gonna look at sort of the high level offer first. They're often gonna be physically written down. They're gonna be some version of a spreadsheet like what I just showed you. Uh, they might be a net sheet involved. I've, had, I've heard of some agents actually calculating all of the numbers and looking at the bottom line net. Um, so, so they're going to distill your offer down into one or two or three categories that really matter most to them. And they're gonna take a lot of complex information and really try to make it simple. So when you're writing your offer and you're thinking about what to, to offer them, keep that in mind. Maybe consider how much uh, they owe on the property, what their net's gonna look like, how you can make that be more attractive. There are ways to pull uh, levers in, in a way that you don't end up uh, just spending more money on the top line, right? The second thing you need to know is you need to figure out how many other uh, people are in the game. Uh, so every, almost everyone who uh, asked me asked how many offers uh, we had. And obviously if you have nine offers, you need to then know where you stack up in that mix. So if you're not, if your agent or you or whoever isn't asking uh, where you stack up and what kind of ballpark you're looking at, you, you could be at the bottom or the front or the middle and you just wouldn't know. So you really need to try and get that information out of there as quickly as possible. The third tip that I wanna give you is this. Sellers generally have a bias towards the people that come in strong at the beginning. Well, frankly, sellers and agents. There's something psychological happening when someone comes out of the gate really strong as opposed to is negotiated up or pulled up into the number one position. Uh, it, it's, it has a lot to do with uh, the ease of the escrow, buyer's remorse, people second guessing once they put their deposit in, being a little more picky or a little harder to deal with in the escrow. And so if you're leaning between writing a little bit more aggressively and a little bit less aggressively and assuming you can just negotiate up, don't assume that. Don't just automatically assume that the negotiation will happen because someone may want to jump out in front and that seller may be more inclined to start with that person because they showed the interest by putting a bigger number out of the gate first. So uh, there is a psychological effect when you write a stronger offer out of the gate as versus um, you hold some money back and then assume you can negotiate up with it. So there is value to writing a bigger offer other than just having a big number psychologically. The fourth thing I think is really, really important to know is understand who is the seller, uh, who's on the other side of that. And I don't mean that in a way of like, I'm trying to write a love letter, I'm trying to get emotional with them, uh, cause I've done other videos on that and that's a hot topic relative to fair housing right now. I'll link to that stuff up here. But in general, what you wanna find out is how many decision makers are there? Uh, are the parents involved? Are the grandparents involved? Are the kids involved? Uh, is there a trust? How many trustees are there? How, is there one trustee who then has to talk to six family members? Uh, are they in different time zones? Uh, what is their timeline to be able to make a decision? What is their mindset going into this some, to some degree? Are they trying to make a fast decision? Are they gonna need the night to sleep on it? You gotta try and understand who is on the other side of that table so that you can hopefully tee your offer up uh, most effectively. 
Generally speaking, it's gonna be uh, people who are looking to respond the same day and give you some feedback same day, uh, but just know that you need to uh, do your diligence on finding out who those people are and what they're all about. Um, because for example, if you're negotiating with a trust and there's a head trustee and that person has a spouse and then there are three siblings and they all have spouses, that's a lot of opinions. And frankly, that's a lot of people to get to agree to counter an offer rather than just take one. And that's been my experience is when you have a trust and that many trustees or, or secondary decision makers, uh, you end up uh, oftentimes just taking the one off the top because it's easier, right? I unfortunately was on the losing end of a, of a bidding situation where we got uh, beat out by $10,000, which at the offer price we, we put in was not a substantial amount of money and my clients could have come up to exceed the next offer. But because of all the decision makers and how problematic it would have been to, to pull all of that information together, they just went with a higher offer. We didn't even get a shot to, to increase our offer. So just know who's on the other side and what you might be able to expect and then make your offer accordingly. The other bit of information you may want to try and glean from the listing agent, whether you're an agent or you're the buyer and maybe you can find this out if you visit their open house or not but what has that agent been trying to tell that seller uh, what has what expectations have they been giving them maybe from a price standpoint maybe from a number of offers standpoint because if you get that baseline and you you somehow understand where that seller's heads at timing wise price wise competition wise you can then figure out hopefully roughly what they're expecting and then try and exceed it or meet it or what have you um, that's really important and harder to get that information, but if you can get it, it will absolutely tee you up for success during the negotiation. So in summary, really what I'm trying to say is the more information you have about this process, the better. Now you've seen what a spreadsheet looks like. Now you see one version of a strategy based on how offers came in on the day. And one thing you really have to understand is this is a very nimble, fluid process. There is no cookie cutter way to do this. People who say, oh, you just counter offer this or go high and highest and best that are missing a lot of nuance because as you can see from our spreadsheet, we had a lot of different offers. We had some cash, we had some investors, we had one below the asking price we had some we actually had a VA loan in the mix there there's a lot of variables that end up playing a factor into how you end up responding and so if you know the agent on the other side and some of their tendencies if you know who the sellers are how many decision makers there are how quickly they're trying to make a decision etc you can really make a better offer a better informed decision and create a better strategy for your offer date uh, and hopefully end up winning the house. I hope you got some value out of that. And since you probably did, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna continue to put out weekly content just like this and you are not gonna wanna miss it. So without any further ado, I'm gonna log it off for now. This is Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International signing off for now. See you guys on the next one.